to meet you. Well, um, it's a Friday, and um, well, of course, we always thank God for it being a Friday. I haven't said that in a while. Uh, but our guest this morning is Dr. Debo Akonde. Dr. Debo Akonde, he is um, the executive advisor to the governor of Oyo State on agribusiness, not just agribusiness, also international cooperation and development. Dr. Akonde is also the director, International Institute of Tropical Actual, uh, Agriculture. Uh, he's a director there as well. And um, so it, 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 that just shows you that we're going to be talking agriculture. Uh, we've been talking about agriculture this week, talking about food scarcity, food security. A fine morning to you, Dr. Debo Akonde. Good morning, and good morning, Nigeria. Okay. Indeed. Glad to have you. Um, uh, well, addressing food security uh, in, well, first of all, it's a national concern, but then in Oyo State, I guess one could say that um, stuff out there seems to indicate that Oyo is taking it very, very seriously, uh, especially when you look at uh, a number of things that Oyo, as a state, Oyo State has been doing with the uh, private sector as concerns the whole agri-business uh, industry. So I thought we could talk about that. Um, first of all, that's, it seems to be that uh, uh, the governor is really excited about this particular aspect of our development, food security and whatever can be done by the state to boost agriculture. Okay, well, uh, hello, Dr. Akonde. Good morning to you again, just by way of testing. Good morning, Dr. Akonde. Good morning. Okay, uh, well, okay, I, I did make a sort of a, a preamble, but let's now cut into it uh, to find out uh, I, it seems that Oyo, is very, Oyo State is very serious about um, its role in, in food production. We're looking at food security and then Oyo State mm -hmm. agribusiness focus. So, uh, the, talk to us uh, about um, the uh, level of seriousness of Oyo State to, uh, to the, the com its commitment to agribusiness generally, especially uh, partnering with the private sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, bringing on board this uh, very, very important uh, question at this <clears throat> point in time of our, of our life as a nation. Um, I think for the first thing that I would like to mention is that uh, um, this general problem that we are experiencing now uh, is something that Oyo State's uh, government has foreseen uh, four or five years ago. Um, in 2019, uh, when the new government came on board, and the first thing we did was to extray uh, where we are on the issue of agriculture and agribusiness. And um, without going too much into the details, uh, we developed a strategy, which um, at a point in time I will uh, share with us, um, on how we are going to tackle the, food, the issue of food security within our state. Um, and of course, you know, at large, you know, supporting Nigeria as a country. Um, we look at what we will do at a short term, we look at what we should do at a mid term, and we look at what we do at long term. So um, what is happening now in terms of food uh, uh, insecurity that we see across the whole of Nigeria, yes, it's something that is a big concern to all of us, but I must say that it didn't meet, meet us as a shock because we uh, premise our own decision based on data, you know, uh, that we had at that particular point in time. As far back as 2017, uh, it's been made clear that 44 percent, you know, of Nigerians are either medium to high food insufficient. We knew that was a problem. Um, we also know that over $10 billion is being expended annually on food importation, you know, to Nigeria as it were. We knew that was an issue. We also knew that we sat on a landmass um, of, of over 28,000 square kilometers, which, put it in a context, is bigger than the whole of uh, southeast of Nigeria or bigger than Rwanda as a country. 
but uh, of that land, we were only, uh, which is so, have over seventy percent of it as uh, arable. We were only cultivating uh, less than around ten to fifteen percent at that particular point in time. We also knew that was an issue. You know, beyond that, we also saw that the key player or actor in our agricultural food system at that particular point in time was primarily smallholder farmers. And that would dovetail to the question that you've just asked me. Um, so we know that uh, if we, uh, we need to continue with those actors, you know, that are just uh, smallholder farmers, um, we won't be able to achieve what we uh, plan towards achieving, uh, as set out by His Excellency, the Governor of the State, you know, to be food sufficient. Uh, because if I give you an example, <clears throat> of these 28,000 square kilometers of land, if we choose to do just 10%, which will be around 2,000, uh, 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 around uh, uh, 2 million uh, hectares of land, 2.8 million hectares of land, it will take us 4 million smallholder farmers to do that. Um, if we say we are going to do 20 percent, then it means that we will use almost the whole population of the state to cultivate just 20 percent, you know, of that land. Then we know that is not sustainable. That can that can be the best way to go. But of course, we recognize, you know, strongly that smallholder farmers as a place they've been the great actor providing, you know, for for over many years. Uh, and in addition to that, good numbers of these uh, smallholder farmers in our state were uh, already aged, you know, above the age of 65. And lastly, we also saw that the budget of the agriculture, in the agricultural sector around that particular point in time, 2019, at, 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 in New York State was just a mere 0.43% of the total annual budget. What the African Union CADAP recommend for any country, and this dovetail to subnationals as well, that we do anything reasonable on agriculture is 10%. So we were seeing 0.4 percent, you know, and we knew that is an issue as well. In addition to that, this 0.4 percent, we question where it's going to. Majority of those 0.4 percent were not going to capital expenditure, you know. So this guided the strategy that we developed for your state for short, medium, and long term. And some of the things that we are seeing today are as a result of those strategies. So I need to make that clear that we have strategy in our state that we are working with. Of course, we tweak it here and there, you know, to ensure that it meets contemporary issues that arises. So one of the first things that we did was to say that we need to bring in new actors. We cannot just continue with that, uh, uh, that uh, primary actor of small holding and expect to see miracle. So uh, that led us to uh, designing a special purpose vehicle to see how best we can groom or we can support um, um, attracting um, um, uh, bigger farmers or commercial farmers to, co to complement, you know, what the small order farmers are doing. Um, and because of that, we established an agency, you know, that focuses primarily on, on designing strategy, on providing policy, on supporting the enabling environment towards attracting um, um, bigger and larger farmers to the state. And one of the things that the agency did at the early stage was to look at the uh, uh, possibility of, of, of how we can stimulate agriculture in the diverse regions of the state. We saw that uh, it, is, it is critical, you know, uh, there is nothing, uh, there is nowhere you can have agricultural uh, uh, transformation without having rural infrastructural transformation. So we put this on board. And that led to the government, decision of the government in terms of infrastructural tar targets. If you have uh, been to Ohio State in the past four or five years, you will see that uh, over 67% of the road construction that were done in Ohio State were done in, in our agrarian areas, in the primary zones, you know, that we have designated for agricultural transformation. So those road connectivities has, has been done. And uh, we also agreed, you know, as a state, that beyond building roads, we need to also have or provide us, I mean, put in place a strategy, what we call one region, one hub. You know, so we have like six or seven regions in Ohio State, um, and we, we agree that in each of these regions, we will have what we call agribusiness industrial hubs. Um, we have, uh, have one built already uh, to 90% finalization. But the interesting thing is that even though we were at 90%, uh, this, this hub is completely occupied by private sector. And I think that is where you're making reference to. So we have over 10 medium to large private companies within that hub now that are, are going to be processing agricultural products. They are there. This is not a case of they will be. They are already in that, in that hub uh, that will be processing agricultural products, you know, to 
diverse uh, process materials. But beyond that as well, you know, uh, they, I mean, the first up is built on a 1,100 uh, hectares of land, you know, at Fashola uh, between um, Oyo and Isei. You know, and, and this hub now, uh, like I said, has both the production uh, center, it has the processing center, it has uh, accommodation, and all what have you that you can talk about. So the land there is being cultivated, you know, the processing center is already commencing. But the hub, as I mentioned, is not just meant, it's not, just not meant to, uh, to cater for those private sectors that are within the hub alone, but that is expected to stimulate agriculture around the whole of the uh, vicinity. Because uh, uh, the materials that will be used for most of this processing uh, will be gotten from somewhere. So this is gradually increasing I, I'm sorry, uh, the capacity I'm sorry to, of uh, production. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there was a picture as you were speaking, and it has this extremely long, apparently high-quality road. Um, it was the picture, unfortunately, because the, yeah, that's the road there. I don't know if you can see it over there. And um, as you were talking about the things that, well, there, that's another one, um, we have often heard from commentators and analysts that these are some of the things that are, you know, sorely required in our agricultural hubs and government doing what it can to, you know, uh, aid uh, these people, that there are no roads. But apparently, Oyo has looked at that. Uh, as an integral right. part, and I'm going to come and talk about more, but I just wanted to bring that up while that picture was up. Uh, that, that, that road that I saw there, if, if we didn't even understand very much else about what you were saying, not that I'm saying that we don't, that road sort of gives you know, purpose to the whole thing, I thought. Thank you very much. You are quite correct. And, and I think I need to put, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, put, put this point uh, forward as well. The road you are making reference to is actually a federal road. But we knew that I that see. road is very, very important to our, to our agricultural plan. And it was built by the state. We didn't wait for the federal government to come and build okay, it for us. You know, road, the state chose to say it was built by the state. It was constructed built by the state because we understand too well what that road meant for that uh, industrial hub that we are building in that particular place in, and this is what we are doing in the state we don't wait for uh, federal government to come and do it. if we see that that road is of importance to us especially as it relates to uh, the full security of the state the government the governor said we need to we continue to go and do it you know and and that is what we have seen in that place and that is one of many of the road that has been done to link that zone you know to other zones on the state now okay. uh, in addition to that as well we we have uh, we have a uh, thousand two hundred kilometers of road that we have commenced that road that you have seen there are feeder roads that goes into the farm now we are commencing construction of all those feeder roads a thousand two hundred kilometers within the state and what that will be uh, uh, doing for us is that it creates uh, the ease of transportation which is one of the fundamental structural issues you know that uh, that we have noted as a major problem to um, agrarian ag ag agriculture in this part uh, part of the world i need to mention oh. that we have not even commenced yes I, I beg your pardon, because uh, again, uh, thank you very much, uh, and you know, uh, really apologize for interrupting you, Dr. Uh, Akonde. But I did introduce you also as, um, you know, um, a director, uh, International Institute of Tropical Ag Agriculture, and um, I just saw some cows there, some cattle there, and um, I was thinking that it stands to reason that there's going to be a very scientific, research-based approach even technical assistance and technical partners, partner sort of based approach. Because I saw some cows there that didn't really look like our cows. And so I knew that, um, what's going on here? These people are being real scientific. They're probably, you know, you know crossbreeding and all of that kind of a thing. Uh, so I, I just thought we might seize that opportunity for you to enlighten us on the quality of cattle and, for that matter, the diversity of, uh, of, uh, of cattle that is being you know, developed on, you know, uh, through the auspices perhaps of uh, OISADA, the Oyo State, uh, what, um, Agribusiness Agri Development Agency. Thank you very much. And, and you are spot on, you know. Uh, again, uh, what, the, 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 the mantra for us is what we call the uh, public-private and development partnerships. 
Uh, we refer to, uh, I believe, what, what we are all used to is the public-private partnerships, but the development aspect is where we look at the development organizations in terms of the technical and, uh, and the financial support for us as well. And that's the point you've raised. Um, you won't believe that, but that is a fact, that the first time that your state government will sign an MOU with IIT, that has its headquarter, such an amazing international institute of research, was just five years ago. So... The point that I'm making here is that we now have IIT as the primary technical development organization that is backstopping a lot of work that we are doing in Oyo State. The livestock you mentioned in that place is being supported strongly by the International Livestock Research Institute, which is a, a, a partner organization, a sister organization to IIT as well. And as you have mentioned, a whole lot of research is going on in that particular location. Uh, the breed that you are saying there across a cross breed, um, uh, the, 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 the feed that they are consuming uh, were, were, are there uh, produced in that particular place. Uh, when some visitors came into that location, they said the only place they have seen such a volume of uh, and, and the quality of, of production of feed in that, uh, in, that, in that form is when they were in Europe or Southern Africa. So the International Livestock Research Institute and IITA is supporting the private sector within that particular hub to provide uh, those um, haze, you know, I mean, you, if you go there now, you will see them stacked, you know, and you, what, what determines, you know, the quality and the quantity of milk, you know, that you could, that could gotten from, from a, a dairy cattle is the amount of, uh, of, of the kind of feed that, that they are consuming. So this is, uh, this is going to be a, a location that what? is, that is ranched completely. You know, when I when I looked you up online, I I, I then saw that even the um, quality of uh, staffing in there, you actually brought people. I mean, first of all, you have partnerships ranging from Japan to you know Denmark to all those traditional kind of places. But uh, even Kenyans who are known, you know, cattle Ken and Kenyans. I mean, it's almost like five and six. There are people working in there, and I was seeing what you were just saying, uh, where the testimony that look. Some of the most fertile land that uh, this Kenyan veteran had ever seen uh, was in Oyo State, where uh, the integrated farm approach that you are adopting in there, uh, integrated cattle development approach, where pastures, you're not leading uh, cattle along the streets of Oyo State, it's all in there. Grazing areas, very, very high quality, what might look like bush or grasses. No, no, no. This is like high quality, nutritious purpose-built uh, and purpose-planted uh, grass. So really, it looks like a real integrated approach. Uh, and I wanted to ask, has all of that begun to impact on the people yet? Because I know you have emphasized milk production, but how about Nama beef? Uh, is the price of beef going to come down? Uh, that kind of a thing. Address that, please, if you will. So that, that, that is currently uh, uh, adding to uh, the overall production that the state is having. It's already, it's already adding up. Um, I mean, what we've seen is the production, is the, is the um, um, livestock rearing site, you know, within that particular hub. But there, and you're right, you know, all those that you have mentioned, uh, the Kenyan that is handling the, one of the companies there, you know, uh, that is a, a multinational company from the Netherlands. Uh, we have local uh, 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 companies there as well that are um, indigenously owned. But this Kenya make us to understand, you know, that um, if they will have planted similar uh, bracteria in, in Kenya, it will take them two years before they start harvesting. This harvesting that we did on this was done in, in six months, and we are doing three harvests in a year, you know, within that particular, particular hub. So, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of uh, meat production, um, that is already uh, taking place within that. We already uh, started, start, started to have that uh, uh, um, um, milk within that place, and that large company that I mentioned, is already starting to collect those milk uh, from those particular companies that we have there. Um, within that hub alone, we have close to between 500 and 700 lactating cows, you know, that is there. And before the end of the year, the expectation is that we have over 2,000. And these are okay. all private sector driven. But I also need to mention, in terms of crop production, that crop production took place in that, that, that place as well. I mentioned that a diverse uh, segment to that. Last year alone, a one company, just one company, did over 220 hectares of maize, you know, within that particular location. When we went there with some high-level uh, indigenous of the state and the country, it was drone that we were used to look at, that look at the farm. We couldn't even drive, it, drive through the whole of the farm enough. But beyond that, I think to me, one of the most critical things that is benefiting the state much more is the seed farm that we established within that particular hub. I need to make uh, this clear, that they... Uh, expanding land 
you know, it's not enough, you know, production. But ensuring that you maximize, maximize the productivity, you know, in, in the land that you have is actually very, very essential. In the last four or five years in oil state, we, 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 we got data, you know, of what how far we have done. And this is corroborated by data from the federal government as well. We've done well. We did well in terms of the land, land increase. We did well in terms of the production, overall production. But we had issues, you know, around the issue of productivity. And productivity means yield. It means that the yield in the state in the last five years and previous years has not been that great. What that means is that something is wrong with our seed system. And what we've done within Fashola, within this hub that you mentioned, is to establish seed farm, you know, um, that, we, that we provide what we refer to as early generation materials, you know, that farmers within the state can use for crop production. Which means that if you were getting six tons or four tons or five tons on your production, in the past, by using these early generation materials, you can be getting close to around 15 to 16 tons. We will be okay. having, uh, this will lead us to having more in terms of our, uh, of, our, of our production. And again, as you have rightly mentioned earlier, this is supported by science and research. It's supported by uh, uh, these uh, diverse uh, international research issues that I was uh, making reference to. You know, so in this way, again, you know, we are already supporting the state in increasing the production, the food production. And this seed farm that we established at Fashola, like I mentioned earlier, we are establishing in all the regions of the state within those hubs that we refer to as one hub, um, one region, you know, in our state. Okay. Now, ju just, to, ju just so as to avoid uh, some slight confusion, uh, Fashola being a popular name in Nigeria, Fashola here, uh, first of all, it doesn't have the H in it, and it's a, it's a hub, as you said, somewhere between Oyo and uh, towards the saying. It's, 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 it's an area. That's right. It's, it's a location. It's that's, that, that's very, very correct. It's a, it's a popular it's known area, so it's the not a, a name of an individual. <laughs> <laughs> because the name uh, can have meaning uh, when it is dropped into anything. I, people I, I, quite, I quite understand you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's an area. And it's a differently spelled uh, fashola. But well, let me ask you, um, uh, I'm sure because of the uh, in-depth scientific approach, technical approach that you're adopting, RITA and all of that, are there such things as... Um, uh, indigenous or local cows, uh, local cattle, and um, what is the role? Are you, I hope you're not leaving them out of uh, developments there, because we see all those other beautiful breeds, maybe you're going for them because of the high yield that they have. Uh, what are our own cows good for, our own cattle, and uh, can it be developed? Are there, will, will there be cross-breeding? Oh, yes. You know, so what you have, most of the cows you have in that place now, they are crossbreed. So you have the cements of, 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, cattle from other places that have high uh, potentials of high milk. And you crossbreed them with our local uh, breed. That is what we are doing. That is the science behind having a higher um, 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 a milk production you know, within that hub, with the inclusion of uh, the feed that they also consume as well. So yes, you know, we have local breed, you know, but they are being crossbreed. And this is the, this is the take, this is the pattern anywhere in the world, you know, um, yes. that, that, that um, you know, you know um, so, in, in, in cattle rearing for, for um, uh, dairy breeding. So when our, cross, uh, when our local breeds are crossbred with uh, foreign uh, imports, uh, because I see that you've been uh, speaking about um, milk production, as important as it is, there are milk industries and all of that. Um, what, what then uh, happens? What, what, what are, is it that our, our beef, our cattle, uh, is good for, you know, for beef, for the table, uh, and other imported breeds and ones that you are developing are better um, you know, for, for milk production, which, given what you've invested in, in this whole area of milk production, I think I was reading something on the internet, uh, Milken or something like that, or your state is also fully involved in all of that. So just tell me about the separation between milk production and how big that is, and uh, indeed the steak or beef productions or whatever we want to call it. So uh, you, uh, your, your point is right. You know, for milk production, you need to uh, bring in... Uh, uh, um, um, a, a, a stock that has the potential for high uh, milk yield. Um, and some of those ones that we are um, 
crossbreeding with us has that kind of potentials, you know, or uh, they've been proven scientifically to have the capacity, you know, to pro produce more milk, you know, than, than what we have. But um, you can't just bring, bring such a, a breed to our society uh, if uh, you didn't put in perspective the, uh, the environment. Um, because where they are coming from, they are not natural to where, um, to Nigeria, they are not natural to Oyo, you know. Um, and, and the best way to ensure that they have, uh, um, they survive, you know, is to crossbreed them with, uh, with the local that has the potential also to, um, um, that are very natural to, to that particular environment. So in nutshell, what that would do is to provide them the capacity to, um, um, to provide higher milk. But that, of course, you know, is not just uh, automatic. You need to put in some other factors like the feed that they are eating, that the water they drink, like the environment and all of you. But in addition to that, it will create high survival rate, you know, um, for, for those uh, cattle uh, locally. Our cattles are good for, uh, for beef, as you have rightly said, pointed out, um, but um, we are not yet getting the potential of those beef. Uh, with the current system that we are adopting. Okay. Um, 